Good morning. Morning. Just silent. I said morning. Just more silence. <laughs> I, I don't know. Come we loaded <laughs> here again in uh, at Inner Four. We are on Eholt, Eholt Summit. I keep recording all of Highway 3 and there's not much left to record. So we'll give you the boring section. That's what she looks like. We're actually missing an 8 footer. There's supposed to be two 8 footers side by side there. And they went through the whole yard and couldn't find anywhere where that 8 footer was. So missing an 8 footer got some 12 footers some 16 18 20 it's a bit it's a bit of a mixed mash of uh different lengths of lumber i don't even know what it is it's 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 like metric so it's 47 millimeter by 150 millimeters so must be going to japan or something anyway let's throw you guys up on the mirror move your hand just in time this video is brought to you by Sutco transportation leaders in transportation services based on safety innovation and sustainability Sutco transportation divisions are residuals transporting wood residuals throughout Western Canada and Pacific Northwest Van Freight, dedicated freight with heated trailer servicing Western Canada, log hauling, logging truck services, Southern British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest, heavy haul, which is transporting of heavy equipment throughout North America, and uh, sales, logistics brokerage, and 3PL, uh, global full service transportation brokerage. Swing over to their website, transportation, Sutco Transportation dot ca, and uh, see what they have offered an offer for you. If you guys are looking for loads to haul or or want to drive for Sutco, there's there's lots of lots of driving opportunities. Uh, Jess and I thoroughly enjoyed our time at Sutco. Worked there for six and a half years and. Really, really enjoyed it. You want something to eat? Oh. Is that what you said? I missed your snack time. Now it's still a I mess. had a few chips. A few munchy over there. A few, not much at all. I beg to differ. I, it's almost a full bag still. Unbelievable! <laughs> I had maybe under 10 chips. Yeah, that's how few. You were trying to sleep. How do you know how many I ate? Because you kept me awake with chomp, 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 chomp. Let's be honest, you couldn't even hear me chomping. How do you know what I heard? The podcast was too loud. I couldn't even hear you chomping. Okay. My hearing works better than yours. That's true. I will not argue that point. You just have selective hearing. What? Yeah, I was just trying to think. It's like, since I hurt myself, I'm getting these simple runs no tarps so I appreciate that thank you trap line I appreciate the no the no tarp loads because my chest still hurts a lot it hurts just strapping these loads down but it does mean we get to run the boring route just back and forth between Grand Forks and the beach Hello. Which means I've recorded all the videos I wouldn't say boring, just the same section of the highway over and over. And that gets boring. 
it doesn't mean the highway's boring. That's true. Anyway, we're gonna head from E Hold down to Greenwood Midway and <clears throat> guessing Rock Creek. Here's E Hold Summit, 1,028 meters. Wildgrass Lake on the right hand side. Can't really see it from the highway. At least not from the camera angles we have. Mm -hmm. It's still kind of frozen over, but I don't think anyone's ice fishing on it anymore. Last week they still were. Seven degrees Celsius. 10 a.m. A little glimpse of the lake here. We saw so many deer yesterday. They're all coming out and grazing in the pasture lands. Yeah. That was like between, well, basically between Osoyoos and Rock Creek. Those pastures up there are on Anarchist. Deer and elk just everywhere. It was crazy. There's a car down there. I remember that from a couple weeks ago. Okay. I don't really look down there very often. Sounds like tomorrow we're going to be loading multiple places in the lower mainland and then delivering to Nelson and places up that way. So coming back on this highway again. You haven't been over the Paulson in a while. I have not been over the Paulson for a while. <laughs> and I know it's been a while, maybe. Those anterior runs are still on the forecast. Yeah, I hurt myself or else we would be on the way to Ontario right now. 
or maybe be in Ontario right now doing a reset down there on the way back yeah. from Ontario. So it is really something that's going to happen. <coughs> we just now have to wait a minute. Yeah, my court date and my dentist date and eye date, doctor appointment, and then I hurt myself and then. have one e weekend requested off in April. After that, end of April, I would be free to go. Like, there's no nothing from my end that should keep me from doing an Ontario run. So hopefully by the end of April, we've got, <coughs> got an eastbound train. I don't know. I started talking, now I can't talk. Jess is looking at me. What's wrong with you? She is froggy. Did you clean up all the cough drops? Yes, but they were in my seat. Where else was I going to sit? In the back. Well, it's better than the answer being at home, so I'll go for it. She's a little spicy today. I'm tired. She's tired. I got six hours of sleep. I don't usually sleep well on the first night back in the truck. I struggled getting comfortable last night. That's probably what cut me up. Probably. And then it was too hot in here, and then, yeah. Yeah, but your blankets, you have such hot blankets here. I had one blanket. But it's a hot blanket. It's a very thin blanket. Okay. I don't use a thick one. Delivered to this farm a couple of times. home for the beginning of June. Okay. So I'll have to keep that in mind. Because these Ontario runs take as much time you have to think ahead. Yeah, there's a possibility of not getting home for three weekends in a row, right? And I can reschedule my thing. It's just one of those things. city in Canada. It's one of the old tunnels there. Used to be two of them side by side. That tunnel was eastbound. We're headed west.
the spring break over here? It's also Easter Monday. I don't think kids are in school today. Uh, Easter Monday is usually for federal employees. Aren't school teachers federal employees or are they provincial employees? Yeah, loading at Interfor, we were the only truck there. Because they couldn't find that last load, it took them, I had to unload and load this, it took them two hours to get that done. And in those two hours, we were the only truck in that yard. As we were leaving, an empty truck was pulling in. So, see, those kids are out playing. I don't think there's school today. section here you got two or three streets of the original Greenwood that exists where all the buildings were just squished next to each other like the whole city used to be like this just building on building on building in fact there's buildings missing here where there used to be buildings so the empty gaps used to be buildings so even here where they're all squished together there used to be more fish and chips. I don't think they were open yet. No, but I tell ya, it's a matter of time of day, fish and chips. I think that comes right after breakfast. I'm a big, like, breakfast for dinner person or breakfast any time of day. After that is fish and chips.
think they'll let them open then like April 15th or something, so a couple okay. more weeks. Many chip trucks and a lot of flat deck. Yeah, there's the only trucks that are working are chip trucks and a few vans. Yeah, see one flat deck. Yeah, flat deck guys are all staying at home today. So I always find this corner here interesting. Why did they dump? Slag over here. I uh, am. Yeah. And the foundry is way out there, and most of the slag is dumped way out there. Yeah. Why did they dump some over here? Uh, do you have an answer? I don't. Okay. I have a guess. It's right along the creek, and I bet you the railroad bed was unstable. So to stabilize it, they're like, hey, let's just dump all the slag. And it's like, foundation for the railroad to sit on because the railroad kept sliding into the river. Oh, that's a Sutco. That's a Sutco. I forget. Super B Sutco. It's just probably a trap line whenever they all don't have their decals yet. Could be. Could but. be. Your theory is pretty close to what mine would have been. I didn't get a good look at the driver. Me either. I usually don't. I usually go off with truck number and truck. here can throw you off as well. You gotta make sure you're coming around these corners at the right speed or else you'll leave a lot of black lines on the road. Thing I didn't know about black lines is they're all new. All the black lines on the highway they've been there for a couple of weeks at the most. Because when I've left black lines, even a week later, it's hard to tell where they were. Uh, rubber on the road wears off pretty quick. Greenwood. It's a nice 
nice little area. It's a nice quiet place, yeah. Just speeding up because we're slowing down to 70 through town anyway. The valley opens up a little bit, a little bit of farmland, more, more, more pasture land than farmland. Crossing to the U.S. Tiny little crossing. Gas station, a hotel. It's a lot more into town stuff too. A couple of card locks. And a museum. Which is closed, but I always see cars parked there, so somebody's going to be working in there all the time. The museum is only open during summer hours, tourist season. Flatbed. There's a couple of flatbeds out here. 
It's a quiet day though. Yeah, I'm like, it's not like normal. It's enough to make the road feel empty. Although getting down into Vancouver tonight will be a little as a long weekend traffic all comes home. Yep. Thought about that too. It should be entertaining. loud <laughs> loud notifications on the phone that's for sure to know how to vertical train. Free J's. There's a golf course here on the left.
doing full speed limit. Yeah, slow down a little bit for the car in front of us, but that's a lot of cars behind us. Luckily we do a hard climb out of Rock Creek. We'll lose them all there. There might be a few that pass us here before Rock Creek, but not too many how aggressive they are. But we'll lose all of them out of Rock Creek. It's a nice, nice long passing lane there. And half of them might turn north on Highway 33. Say this time of year it should be close to flood level. It's far from that. videos like snow videos chained up a few times and I don't think I chained up a single time where I felt like I actually needed to chain up with my trailer I was still running the quad deck so I feel like I could have gotten away without chaining up unless if, if it wasn't for the legally required chain up Let's see if we can lose this train behind us. How many of them are turning off here? Two. These two turned off. Three turned off. Three turned off, four stayed straight. I guess I had seven cars behind me. Well, plus the one that passed me, so we're gonna eight at one point. We'll just do this little hard climb here, and then we'll call it a day. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed it, the, the boring part. The boring part of the highway that I never record.
always a kind of nice viewpoint down looking into the Kettle Valley. Climb out of it. The rear facing cam comes in quite handy here. through the steps as you're talking with them? Oh, no, he just answered the first one and then I just continued that. Well, I have cell service that you want to... Which, which uh, stream on YouTube to set up to? You need to set up two YouTube streams yeah. and OBS uh, plugins. Yeah. That's where I left him. Okay. My uh, quick texting isn't probably in depth enough, but... It should work. Uh, did you tell them that it worked on my computer but not yours? So... I'll have to see... It's in the major lower bit right, but yeah. To make sure his PC can handle it. control panel and look at the performance and see if it's actually, if the computer's handling it or, or not. See, Jess is doing IT support while on the road. <laughs>